Hey, hey, it's Monkey Puzzle. Welcome to episode number 60 of Monkey Wrenching the Beast. We've got a deer that wants to come join the crew. Uh, it was big enough to uh, trigger the tripwire, but uh, a little too big to come in. I'm sorry, deer. Uh, you can watch from there for the episode and hang out if you want to. I'm okay with that. Anyway, I haven't been able to record this week because I was finishing all the upgrades that I detailed last week, and I think I got it pretty much together. Uh, I've got the new CPU in, and it required a new motherboard, and got our FPS up. Uh, I'd like it to go higher, but it's better. I was running about 12 to 14 before, which was getting pretty bad, even when I wasn't recording, at least around the base over here. Uh, now when I'm not recording, I get up to 40 or 50, which is much better, and just hovering right around 30 when I'm recording, so... Got to keep the Feed the Beast going as we get more and more intense. And I'm going to even make it more intense today and put that CPU to the challenge. Uh, also, today is the first day I'm recording with my new mic. And I'm not sure what I think about it. I think I still need some have some dialing in to do. Uh, I may or may not keep this one. We'll see. But I definitely wanted to improve over the headset, which was pretty decent for what it was, uh, but it's still a headset and it's still sitting there right by my mouth. And I want to take this up to a more professional quality. So yeah, bear with me and give me feedback. Tell me what you think of it compared to the old mic. Uh, if you like it better or you hate it. And also, yeah, we're going to adjust the volume and stuff. I'm recording with DX Tori also for the first time today which is going to allow me to adjust it independently because I'm not sure if I got my volume settings right and all that. But anyway, enough with that technical stuff. Uh, just letting you know what I've been doing and what's going on, and what may be different in this episode. Anyway, I want to show you my wheat farm <laughs> right now. Our little wheat farm, pretty small footprint. Uh, before, this was just serving the uh, cows and the mushrooms and the chickens and uh, I guess the deer and the sheep eat it too, uh, which are slowly leaving the ranch here, <laughs> the reserve. Uh, they have the ability to walk through fences somehow. Uh, so, <laughs> you guys, why are you doing that? Uh, I'm going to have to upgrade uh, the fencing here at some point, uh, but that's a tangent. I might put like two high glass covers or something, but somehow the fences just don't do it. Some of those old Minecraft glitches. Uh, anyway... I needed a lot of seed oil for the beekeeping, uh, tons of seed oil uh, for lots of impregnated sticks, uh, for the impregnated frames, uh, which are the best ones you can make yourself without trading with the villagers. Um, so I had to take this up a level and uh, rather than designing something big and huge and all that, I just changed out the lily pads and changed them out for these ones with these nice little swirly cues. Uh, these are called lily pads of fertility, and they're in Zeno's reliquary. Uh, not to be confused with the regular vanilla lily pad, which was doing just fine, which was just keeping me from walking in the water. Uh, these ones, you put uh, eight of these splash fertilizer serums around, uh, which are made like that, and this is made like that. Uh, and I made a bunch of them and the serum vial there's a recipe for that too um, I guess uh, let me see the vial yeah the empty vial uh, it's just five glass panes together like that so uh, not bad Anyway, it's boosted the production so much that uh, I've gone through, this is my third uh, extra dimensional barrel of wheat. I just stuck the other two up there right now because I don't know what to do with them. And my second extra dimensional barrel of seeds. So really boosting it up, I had to double my golem crew. Uh, so, and make the wood golem smart. That guy only does seeds and the other guy only does wheat. Um, and they still can barely keep up. Uh, they're busy all the time. They barely get a rest, but they don't seem to complain. Golems being what they are, they just keep going at it. So every once in a while, I come up here and I forget about it for a while, and I find seeds and wheat all over the place because they've filled the barrel, uh, which is not good for my FPS when I let that happen. Uh, anyway, hello, dear. Excuse me. Uh, but today, 
We're going to lower our FPS some more <laughs> by doing all kinds of uh, further fancy things over here in our new power center. So uh, let me jump on down here. And in the beginning intro, I used the little musical sequence just to show you uh, some of the additions I've made. I added 10 more stills uh, because it was just creeping along here, uh, the amount. And uh, now it should be doing pretty good. I just turned it back on and it hasn't started pumping again for some reason. I'm not sure why, uh, but this was going up pretty steadily. Um, and the biofuel actually was not quite keeping up. It was going down uh, fairly steadily. So I had to increase that. Uh, for some reason, it's not doing it right now. Uh, oh, there's some movement. Let me see, we're going up. Okay, we're going up. So we've got uh, some production. I had turned it off because I didn't want to fully run out of biomass before I showed you guys what was going on. Um, and I want to do some experiments to see how we can get uh, biomass positive again. Although it's doing it right now, and it's because these stills aren't working. I'm not sure if the uh, liquid ducts are getting f full. No, they should still be full, or the uh, conduits are charging up or something. It says it's powered, um, but uh, it's not making anything. Uh, let me let me figure this out, and I'll be right with y'all. Aha! I figured it out. Uh, let me see. Where's my portable hole? Let's go down here. Whoop! <laughs> Let's go over here. Uh, I emptied out underneath here, uh, which for a project we're going to get to today. I'll tell you about it in a second. Um, but in the process, uh, looks like Yurtel disconnected our power. I thought I went under where it was, but uh, yeah, the uh, he just grazed it a little bit right here. So let's just get that hooked back up. And we should be producing uh, biofuel again. Let's go check it out. Uh, that would definitely have stopped it. <laughs> I wasn't getting power. Now I wonder why it said it was getting power before. There was these little green lines weren't there uh, but nothing was happening or little green flames anyway uh, now we're getting that I guess that's the current uh, bucket of biomass it's working on so there you can see we have biofuel being generated we're getting a nice creep up uh, we're getting a bucket there's a bucket and there's another bucket so every two three seconds we're getting a bucket and now this is uh, in slow decline uh, it's going down um, so yeah we've reached that level um, so I need to probably add a couple more fermenters uh, which I'll do in a second uh, just to get that positive we want to be biomass positive <laughs> the other thing I'm gonna do today is I'm going to make a steam boiler and instead of using the biomass directly to create the MJ to run this whole thing we'll use the biofuel to run the uh, liquid fueled firebox for the boiler we're gonna have two boilers we'll have a solid fueled one and a liquid fueled one and the liquid fueled one will fuel off this stuff and th I think that will be a lot more efficient than using this directly so this whole thing is just kind of going out of control here. It looks pretty cool though. Uh, very mad scientist. And uh, that should also cut down on the uh, net loss of biomass. Um, we're running on water right now because I couldn't keep up with the apple juice. Uh, and to do the water, I just made a uh, smallest Zycraft tank with a Zycraft water block right there next to a valve. So it just has one block in the center that uh, we can actually see from underneath here. Let's go check that out. And there we go. One block of water. <laughs> and that is what is uh, keeping, oops, keeping the, uh, the, the fermenters running right now. I'm also curious, uh, I've, I've uh, given it some time 
to build the uh, apples back up in here. So uh, we should be able to exchange to uh, change to apple juice right now for a while anyway. So let's turn that off. And then as soon as this runs out of water, um, it will then fill with apple juice because that's ready to come out. So when that transitions, we'll see if the, the little gain we get from the apple juice is enough to, uh, to make us biomass positive too. Oh, that was quick. Uh, these are still full of water. I'll cut back to when they've got apple juice and we'll check it out. Meantime, you can see that it's on a sapling refill cycle. All coming out in a nice little row. It actually ran out of saplings too, so uh, I'm using them faster than they're being created at this point, which is good because I've got a big backlog of them, and I uh, don't, you know, need to be able to use that up. Uh, so uh, these are full of apple juice now. So let's go see what's happened. We're still going down. Uh, maybe a little bit more slowly. Um, maybe it's going to take some time. Look, it stopped there. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll keep an eye on it and see if it changes at all. But I think we've slowed down the loss and uh, it's just kind of creeping down now. So we're at uh, 2,600,000, 2,600 buckets. So we'll check on it a little bit and see what happens. Um, also, we're going to just turn the water back on because this will run out of apple juice at some point. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. Uh, it's got a good amount of apples right now, but once it uses all these up. And speaking of uh, overfilling barrels, <laughs> you can see I keep adding extra dimensional barrels here and I stick them up on the wall and uh, they get full really quickly. So we need to start doing something uh, with all this wood. Um, and what I'm going to do with it is I want to make charcoal out of it and use it to run. I think I'm going to use it to run the uh, liquid f or the, the solid fuel firebox. Um, I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, what's the best thing to do with a bunch of charcoal uh, for fuel? And I want to be able to create EU as well. Um, so I could, uh, you know, I could just run it straight through uh, good old industrial craft generators because I may have more than enough coal to make that worthwhile. Um, but that's not the most efficient way I can do it. Probably the most efficient way I could do it is run it through a, I'm gesturing to where it's going to be, a solid fuel firebox uh, steam boiler um, and then with a steam turbine. The problem is steam turbines only last something like, what, 85 hours of real real life game time or something like that, which is, I guess, quite a bit. Um, I've seen it from estimates from 40 to 80. I'm not sure exactly, but they use 99 pieces of iron each time that you have to replace them. I mean, you can uh, do a repair if, if you take them out when they're partway broken, uh, but anyway... Yeah, uh, that's, um, <laughs> apparently the, uh, you can also do is, uh, use it to create, uh, MJ through steam, industrial steam engines, and then convert it to EU by melting it into, uh, melting cobblestone into lava with a magma crucible, which is a one-to-one -one conversion. Uh, or you could go harvest netherrack, uh, mine netherrack, and, uh, Last I tested that, uh, it was actually a 25% profit with a nether rack, except that you had to go get the nether rack, which is a lot of work, uh, or you had to set up a quarry and a whole system for that. Uh, anyway, we'll figure out uh, what we're going to do with it. Uh, there's also a um, bio generator uh, that you can create EU out of, and you can run biofuel through it, but... Uh, uh, last I read, that was really inefficient, although very easy. If I was in the ultimate, uh, I could have a energy bridge that I could use uh, to turn the steam into EU, but uh, I don't have that. So anyway, 
uh, I was figuring out how I'm going to turn this wood into charcoal. And I was thinking I was going to use um, uh, powered furnaces maybe with the MJ, or I could use the charcoal itself to do it. Um, but then I thought about Coke ovens. Coke ovens don't use any external fuel and will actually create another fuel. We'll create, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, kerosene? No, uh, creosote. <laughs> there it is. We'll create creosote. And that can also run uh, the steam engines, uh, the steam, not the engines, but the boilers, the fireboxes for the boilers. Uh, anyway, um, so I'm going to try that. Uh, the problem is they're really slow. Uh, they take forever. I timed it. It's like two and a half minutes per piece. So I was thinking, well, what if I hollowed out underneath here and lined it uh, with uh, Coke ovens? We've got a 24 by 24 space, so I could do 8 by 8, uh, which would, uh, it, you know, of Coke ovens, which would be... 64 coke ovens <laughs> which uh would do at least a stack of coal every two and a half minutes um you know so that's better than just one of these I st it still wouldn't keep up with this uh we'd still have to have a, another storage solution over here but at least we'd be turning a lot of it into charcoal and i think a stack every two and a half minutes should be more than enough to keep a a uh, what you call it a f solid fuel firebox three by three uh, steam boiler going. All these new terms don't just roll off my tongue quite yet, but I'll get there. So anyway, I figured out uh, what I'd need for that. Uh, for sixty four coke ovens, I'd need uh, one thousand six hundred and sixty four coke oven bricks, which would be basically 104 stacks of regular bricks because there's uh, four of them per per coke oven brick and then five pieces of five blocks of sand and that'd be 130 stacks of sand <laughs> so I've set up a way to do that uh, I've got these nether chests here or ender chests excuse me and this one's got brick and this one's got sand um, and if I go ahead and turn this on to energy pulser, I'll start getting a solid stream of coke oven bricks coming through here, ready to go into, uh, did I make this extra dimensional yet? Uh, it doesn't look like it actually. Uh, let's go get uh, one of these upgrades that I just keep have to keep a constant supply of on hand at this point, um, and put that on there. And now we're ready to get, uh, let me see, our 1,664 coke oven bricks, which I should figure out how many stacks that is. Just a second. Well, that's only 26 stacks of them. <laughs> Not too bad at all. Uh, so this uh, I'm going to fill. I've got uh, over here in the, let me see, in the glacier warehouse. Uh, I've got this one for the brick, which I am, I can fill up. Uh, from these chests over here. This is just my smelting station for the ingots. I don't have another big scale uh, electric furnace thing set up yet. So that one doesn't need to be on right now. Um, so I'm just using these and I've got the hoppers. I think all the bricks have been made. I used all the clay I've got pretty much. So hopefully I got enough. We'll see. But these are all full of bricks. So I got to clear out my inventory. Um, and once I do that, I can just keep transferring these over. I could have set up an automatic way to do this, but since it's just a one-time thing, uh, I didn't really see the point. Um, and then over here, I've got one for sand that is, uh, I'm just filling up from these barrels that are left over from the quarrying, and I've got my surplus of sand. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Uh, this holds 27, so if I fill this up full of sand uh, four times, uh, let me see, actually I need 130 stacks of sand. So, let me see, 57, no, 27, uh, or actually 130 divided by 27. I've got to fill it up 
4.8 times, and then I will have enough coke oven bricks, or I could just keep running back and forth. Anyway, I'm going to get that done, and I'll come back to you once I've uh, made this transfer. And while I've got this going, I should make sure I'm prepared for the next step so we can maybe actually finish it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to need to make some steel plates for these high-pressure boilers. Um, which needs, uh, I'm, which means I'm going to need steel. I'm going to need 144 steel, I think, and I have 134 already made. So I'm just going to need 10 more. Um, but to make these, uh, we need two of these. And to do that, we put four of these in the rolling machine. So uh, I'm going to get that going in the meantime. Let me put a little bit more sand in here. Uh, and then I'm going to go do that. All right, we've got the rolling machine all charged up. Let's put uh, four, uh, a pattern of four like this of, of the uh, ingots. And we can just put the rest of these in here. And we'll come back uh, with just a little bit more. Um, but let's get that going. And let's check on how this is going over here. Uh, we're up to 19. All right, almost up to 26 stacks. I got to double check my math on that. And I may not have explained this adequately before. Oh, it looks like I need to go fill these up already. Um, I think I got a, no, I don't have any more bricks on me. Um, in this auto crafting table, I've got the recipe set up right here. So uh, that's just pulling from these chests and out this way. Anyway, let me go keep refilling. Uh, we're almost there. I think we're gonna have just the right amount. And this was literally, like all the clay we had from quarrying out at sea from the glacier warehouse. It was quite a bit uh, from those first layers uh, under the ocean. Anyway, up oh, there we are. Uh, let's go ahead and take these out because uh, we might need bricks for something else after that. But we've got uh, 26 stacks plus of coke oven bricks. So let me see. Let me just go ahead and disable that. Uh, put these back, get them out of my inventory. And then uh, let me show you what we're going to do with these. And then we'll go ahead and do it off camera. Got a little bit room, a little bit more room. Two more. Okay. <laughs> so I hollowed out this nice space down here. And uh, this is going to be solid Coke oven. So let me see. I need at least three space above. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, this takes three, so that leaves us uh, eight. So let's do four above and four below. One, two, three, four. And then that will be uh, Coke oven. I can go ahead and do start the bottom layer first. Uh, we can dig out to go around the sides. Um, yeah, so I'm going <laughs> to fill this all the way up. And I'll show you the results after I've done this. I guess I can fly faster than I can place. Anyway, this will take a minute. You know, while I am uh, doing this, I realize there might be a flaw in my plan. Sometimes multi-block structures don't work, uh, don't work well together next to each other. They confuse each other. Let's see if I, uh, if it actually forms. And it doesn't seem like it is. Oh, man, that's a bummer. So we're going to actually have to have one space in between each of these uh, for it to work. Did I fill everything in? Yeah. Oops. Uh, that's not forming the way it is. So I'm going to have to shift my plan. And they're going to have to be this amount of space uh, in between. Oops each one of these. Yep. All right. Well, uh, let me figure that out. So it turns out I can fit, uh, oops, six this way. So I'm going to have to just get this. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to go seven more blocks that direction and uh, maybe this direction or that direction. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to have to widen it some. Well, I was going to do it by hand, and I thought better of it. 
then I was going to do it like this. And, you know, they're doing a good job, but uh, it's taking a little bit too long. So, uh, get this guy going. Instead, I'm going to do it this way. Uh, and I don't even have to deal with the blocks. It's interesting being so rich that the uh, having blocks is a is a bother. So anyway, you guys have seen this, so I don't have to take your time with it. Uh, but it's still fun. <laughs> Okay, after that uh, slight detour, uh, it's time to get back to business with the uh, coke oven building. Well, it's coming together, and I'm starting to get a sense of the scale of this. <laughs> you never realize how big something's going to be until you actually build it. Uh, I'm having a feeling that uh, this actually might comprise this episode. It's all going to be about using coke ovens to make charcoal and there it is 64 coke ovens for making charcoal <laughs> all right that's good and ridiculous okay everybody it's a day later and i accidentally left this on all night and <laughs> look what i got I've almost got a full tank of biofuel, so that's excellent. Um, and I turned off this outlet here, uh, so now this is actually starting to fill up a little bit, uh, slowly, and it'll fill up a lot more quickly uh, when I turn this off. I wish there was a way to just put a valve into uh, this. Uh, I guess if it went into something and out of something, the outlets need a lever to turn on and off. Um, but yeah, I'd have to make a tank or something. Uh, otherwise, I'd just have to break a pipe or whatever. Um, yeah, if you guys have a cool suggestion for how to put a little valve on a switch here, that would be cool. Um, anyway, yeah, so uh, this video has probably gone long. I'm not going to get the boilers in today. I'll have to do that next time. Um, but yeah, you saw the uh, 64 coke ovens for making charcoal. So I got to get these piped up and uh, that's going to take a while. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that off camera, figure all that out. And then I will bring you back when I've got something together. Uh, basically, I'm going to need an outlet for creosote, uh, which is going to be the byproduct. So there's going to be liquiducts uh oops <laughs> we got slimes in the bargain too we got a nice little slime chunk stop bothering me i'm trying to do a video you guys uh yeah and then of course i'm going to need inputs and outputs i'm going to need uh, input of logs and output of charcoal and then they're going to need to store all that charcoal uh as well lots and lots of barrels uh i guess i should start considering using applied energistics for the amount of materials that I'm gathering here. Uh, problem is, I don't really like it. <laughs> it doesn't feel like Minecraft to me. I know, you know, it's cool. I'm not dissing on people who use it. That's all good. It just uh, feels a little weird and it's also a little sketchy. I've seen people have their discs erased uh, when they use it. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna get all that figured out. Uh, I'm just gonna do this with Buildcraft, I think. Uh, I might use, uh, uh, what you call it, um, Red Power red power uh, stuff but the problem is there's all these rumors that uh, red power might not make it into the next packs uh, so I know um, the developer of it I forget her name uh, Ella or something she said that the uh, she's actually around and she'll probably get it together last minute um, Ella Ram um, but we never know we never know so yeah I'm gonna see if I can do it in Buildcraft if I have to do red power I will anyway I'm gonna think about it figure it out and get back to you Oh, and one more note before I do that is I listened to some of these videos and I do not like this mic. So I've already gone ahead and got another one that I'll try in the next video. Uh, but it just sounds veiled and the volumes, the gain's too low. Man, I fail. Uh, and yeah, it's this was a trial 
on to the next <laughs> anyway thanks for putting up for the sound in this video it will improve okay i'll be back okay i haven't piped it all yet up yet but uh, here's what i learned i tried putting gates on the top side and bottom um and i've got some stuff in here right now it's doing its thing so this gate if i set it for inventory empty i get false that has to do with this one see now it's true it's positive that the uh, inventory is is empty now if i put the wood back in uh, it reads inventory is not empty I don't get a signal for that however the other ones don't work uh, well items in inventory definitely works space in inventory doesn't work because there is space in there but it doesn't know it um, and it thinks the inventory is full so uh, all we can do with the build craft besides the tank stuff is uh, whether the inventory is empty or there's items in it, which is basically the same thing, reverse of it. So, uh, you know, uh, kind of limited options. The side, uh, it, it, it always thinks it's empty, even when they're both full. Uh, so that must have something to do with these ones. And the bottom is the same. It uh, still thinks the inventory is empty. So I don't know a way to get the buildcraft gates to know whether there's charcoal in it or not, I would just have to have, to get stuff out of it, I would just have to have Autarkic gates running all the time. Um, so that's no good. Uh, as far as getting the uh, creosote out of it, that's no big deal. Uh, I tried putting uh, the uh, liquid ducts here, give them a signal, and they pull it right out. I assume you could pull out of any side. I've pulled out of the top before. So I was considering uh, hooking that all up. I did a little Google search for, um, uh, what should we call it, for uh, gates and Coke ovens, and I came up with this. I found someone who did this on, on Reddit. He used a factorization router. Um, and th now routers only work with connected inventories. Well, you connect them with furnaces is what he did. You can connect them with any item that had a inventory. So I tried it first, uh, over here, just on one of them, deactivated that one. So it wouldn't connect. And, uh, I told it to insert into slot zero. Um, and slot zero is this. Uh, so it goes goes ahead and does it just fine and this one over here I told to extract from slot one and That is slot one. So no upgrades required for that at all Now, okay, so that works on one of them. Uh, will it work on all of them? Well, I did the thing over here where we connected them and it does work uh, it goes ahead and inserts uh, into them. It seems to do build up to 26 and then it moves on to the next one and the next one i wanted to see how far i could go and it keeps working it wants to in insert also into this slot in the furnace uh, that must be slot zero so i just put a piece of cobble there and then it can't insert anything and insert it to here insert it to here insert it to here and at the end i said extract from slot one and it's doing it so two routers can do this whole line um, but I thought, okay, well, can we turn a corner? Um, and I tried that, and guess what? <laughs> that router over there uh, with these connected with furnaces uh, made it all the way to the corner here. So pretty likely that uh, if I put a router inserting over there and then I had one extracting over here and I had this all connected with furnaces, uh, pretty likely I could handle it with two routers, <laughs> which would be simple as pie. And because they're so slow, uh, we're only going to be getting a stack every two and a half minutes here. I think that could handle it without even a speed upgrade or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. Uh, I need to, I've never used routers, so I just got to look up a little bit about putting, inserting stuff into them and taking stuff out of them. Uh, you know, I know I can pipe things into it. Uh, I just want to uh, learn a little bit more about that. Like, you know, I'm wondering if I could just sit a barrel on it and I can pull out of it. Unlikely. I'll probably have to have a gate pumping stuff into it. Um, anyway, I'm going to check all that out and uh, figure that out. Um, 
Yeah, but this is pretty simple. So we're nearly there. But I think I got this figured out how it's going to go downstairs. Uh, let me see if I can wrap up this video uh, by pulling this off. Let's see if we can do this here. All right. So this is the diamond pipe that was uh, filtering out the oak wood. Um, so let's go ahead and take that off. And uh, we're just going to move it over here. We're going to put it in the corner. So uh, let's go ahead and get that. And then the down color is going to be black. So no, I don't want that. So black is oak wood. So uh, we got that set up. So let's go ahead and uh, take this down 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 it's actually going to need to go over here uh, let me take it to the side actually and get it out of my way so let's take it that way and get rid of that okay and I can adjust this later make it pretty uh, actually I want it up here okay so all the, the wood the oak wood from the farm it's going to go this way. And we're going to take it off to the side. I've got some glass down on the floor so I don't fall through a hole. And uh, take it over here. And it's going to go down. Now, right here by the router, I've made, uh, excuse me if I keep moving from the mic, uh, I've made these brown marker blocks. Uh, and you can guess, probably guess what's going to happen next. Um, but if you haven't, I'll keep you in suspense. Uh, probably not too suspenseful. Okay, and let's place some barrels here. Uh, we'll start with three, only because I need to go to the uh, nether and uh, get some more blaze rods so I can make more of these. But we'll start with three of them. And so those barrels uh, will receive the oak wood. And uh, actually, just to make sure that they uh, don't overflow let's do a little trick here let's get uh, this over here and some more uh, diamond transport pipes and uh, we're gonna go ahead and make these diamond and they don't really have to be but then in each of the black we can tell it to put oak wood um, that means that as long as there's space in that barrel it will put uh, oak wood in there. And that way we make sure that we don't overflow off the end. Um, so, okay, we got all the oak wood going in there. Now we're gonna put Mr. Clay Gollum, our helpful worker, he's gonna serve the inventory of this router. And he's all, Master, what do you want me to keep in this container? Uh, we're gonna have him put any amount of wood. And uh, first we're gonna tell him that he is brown and it's probably I should have gone the other direction up oh, there it is you're brown and you're gonna keep any amount of oak wood so let's start him off since the farm's not running and he's gonna go ahead and put it into the router and keep the router full and then uh, these were already full from before but you can see I've got these all connected and from our research before I'm assuming that that one is going to be able to serve, fill all these Coke ovens, and this one is going to extract. Um, and before I tell it to extract, there's one more thing I need to make. So let's go do that. And that thing is an ejector upgrade for that router. First time I've ever made one of these, and I got it wrong. <laughs> okay. What did I do wrong? Planks, pressure plate, cobble, dark iron, and what did I do? Planks, pressure plate, cobble, dark iron. Oh, is it because it's a, it's because it's a sticky piston. Okay, uh, let me go get a regular piston. All right, back with that, no problem. And we've got our ejector upgrade. So let's go use it. Where's my hole? And it's going to be over here somewhere. 
All right, so uh, let's figure out how to do this. I haven't done this before. Hopefully, I can just right click on it. Yep. And so I'm going to say to extract no from slot one. Okay. And it's, it's starting to do that. And then we're going to put this up above it. And we're going to tell it to eject to top. And see if that works. It does. I hear some slimy sliming down there. Um, and then to get those out of there, uh, let's go ahead and put a wooden pipe on that. And let's get a... I had it in here. Where'd it go? I'll just grab another one. A autarkic gate. And put that on there. And then let's uh, pipe this up. So we're going to... Let's do it up here. Uh, we'll start with a couple of them. Um, and we're going to give them... Oops. No, don't hold it. Be it. There you go. Extra dimensionally upgraded. And some golden pipes to get it up there. Barrels, of course, always got to get filled from the top. And eventually we'll have a whole line of this charcoal. And it will feed the... Uh, the the uh, steam boiler with the solid fuel firebox so uh, almost there um, I think oh yeah let's do the diamond pipe thing again to make sure these things don't overflow so put those up there make sure I get my gold pipe back and do I got some on me oh wow <laughs> these things have been working so uh, let's see. We want it in the black again. So black is going to be charcoal. And there you go. And then uh, we're going to tell this uh, items in inventory, energy pulser. So that should start filling those up with the charcoal. And then the last thing to do here, I believe, uh, is uh, let's go on up here. <laughs> And turn the tree farm on. So, yeah. Get out of the way. And, yep. The do oak tree farm. What's going on here? Oh, he must be out of fuel again. He spins around when he's out of fuel. So, uh, let's pick that stuff up. And... I'm going to give him some fuel. So I'll refill him fully later. But guess what? I've got some charcoal on me. <laughs> Let's give him some wood too. And uh, say refuel all. Okay. He can move 3,085 times now. Oak tree farm. All right. There he goes. And uh, did I not give him bone meal? didn't there you go okay and we should be getting logs already so let's go ahead and see what they're doing it looks like they're going down there logs coming down yep and as soon as they come into here he's putting them into there and uh, each of these can hold 64 oak so, uh, and there's 64 of them. So it's basically one unupgraded barrel worth of storage down here. Uh, you're doing a great job, Clay Gollum. So hopefully these will all get filled up. Uh, it's going to take a little running to see if uh, it gets all the way here. Oh, yeah. And the last step is I'm going to need to pipe it up with Liquidux and extract the creosote, which I don't have time for in this episode, but that's easy. Just going to hook it all up with Liquidux and make a tank full of creosote somewhere. Uh, I'll figure out where that goes, but uh, that'll be done by the next episode. So anyway, yeah, I hope you enjoy this episode. Uh, we have a massive charcoal making system here <laughs> that uh not only doesn't use any fuel um but it it uh, actually uh creates more fuel besides the charcoal itself it creates another byproduct which is the creosote so 
Um, I'm really psyched that this router thing worked for this whole thing. Anyway, I'll see you on the next episode. And, uh, you know, figuratively speaking, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, please give me all your comments and suggestions and everything like that. And I'm going to have a new mic for the next episode, another new mic. So we'll see if that one's better than this one because uh, I don't really care for this one. You tell me what you think. But uh, I think this one is a, a thumbs down. Anyway, Monkey Puzzle signing out. Bye-bye.